Welcome back. Today we're going to learn how to make scatter plots, line charts, and area charts in views. Even though these are distinct things, views makes them all in a very similar way, and so we'll look at them all together. This will give us the ability to make well-designed plots that help us show changes over time, correlation between different variables, and so on. These are the kinds of plots that are also quite important in areas like business, sociology, science, etc. So let's have a look. Again, we start with this basic views layout. Again, mine may look different than yours because of the presets I've put in. And again, we will cover how to change that eventually. Let's go ahead and just zoom this to page so that we have a large area to look at. We're going to look at a plot of something over time, and in particular, I thought it might be interesting to look at the medium home price in the U.S. over the years. There is data from 1963 onward, and eventually we'll look at all of that data, but just so that we don't have too many points for this particular example, let's look at the data that goes from 2000 onward. There's a typo here, so let me go ahead and save that and reload this. I've already loaded the data in, so we can simply plot it. All of these charts essentially are based upon scatter plots, where we have both x and y coordinates for each data point. To plot these, we just do plot points with lines and error bars. We don't have errors today, but we will look at errors eventually in this course. We add this. Again, it adds an x and a y. It gives us this x, y, coordinate here, and all we're going to do then is specify what our x coordinate is and what our y coordinate is. We're going to look over time, so that is after 2000 year, and then the price, which is after 2000 price. Again, we're only looking at the data from 2000 onward. This is the default that views spits out. It's a series of points all connected by a line. It also defaults to this red color, which we could change, and we'll look at how to do that. One thing that Views also does, which I'd like to point out, is that it defaults to set the minimum and maximum X points at exactly where the data starts and ends. And so you can see that we start at 2000 and end at 2020. And that's exactly where it set this. And this can cause us problems because it leads to partially cut off data points. So what I like to do many times is just go in and adjust its automatic fitting to be something like 1999. And if I push this in, you'll see it gives us a new tick mark, but I don't need in this case that much room. And so I think instead 1999.5 is what I will use. That means that I should use 2020.5 as well. And now I have something where the data fits in entirely. You can see that since 2002, the median home price went up. We had the market crash that was around 2008, and then it's been going up ever since with a small dip due to the early COVID-19 pandemic. All right, what can we do here? Several different things. One, you'll see that the, X, the Y axis is unreadable because we can't see all of the points of interest. And so I will go into the Y axis and adjust that. There's a few different ways that we could do this in our axes. One would simply be to take the graph and make the left margin bigger, about 2.5 centimeters. Bigger than we need. And now I can see everything. And probably then if I put in a title like median home price, I'd be able to see everything. Other things I could do is that I could say, rather than medium home prices in actual dollars, what if I wanted them in thousands of dollars? Then with a Y selected, I can go here and say that my scale is scaled by a thousand. When I type that in, it multiplies everything by a thousand, which is not what I wanted. Instead, let's multiply this by 0.001. And now what I have is just hundreds. And then what I would write is median home price in thousands of dollars. It's a little too big. That's okay. We'll go to our page just in this case to make it slightly bigger so that we can actually see what's going on. Nine centimeters. View 
zoom to page. Now I have something where I have median home prices in thousands of dollars. That works pretty well. I could have written hundreds of thousands of dollars and multiplied by 0 0.00001 in the scale, and that would also work pretty well. Down here, I have year, so let's just, for completeness sake, put that in. Now, this is one way that we can display what's going on in our plot. I don't really like the fact that the outline on these data markers and then the line here are different colors. I would like to change that. So let's just have a look at how we might do that. If I click on my scatter plot, then over in formatting is where all my control happens. I can change what my marker looks like. I could have diamonds instead of circles. I could have stars instead of circles if I wanted. Um, but let's just stick with circles right now. I can change their size. If I want them to be large, I could say five point. That's too big as far as I'm concerned. So we'll go back to what it had the default as, as two. Maybe even now that I'm looking at it, I might like 2.5. That looks pretty good to me. The color is automatic, but I could change this to whatever I want. So let's say maybe green or maybe blue or maybe something not quite so piercingly blue. You can see I have custom defined colors for a color palette that I like and let's use that blue. The default here is still to have the outline of this circle be black. And I said, I don't really like the outline of this being different from the line connecting it. So I have a few options. One is to change the line color that's here. And I could say this should be the foreground color or I could even type in if I want it black. Actually, if all you want is black, Another thing you can do is just type any nonsense phrase and it defaults to black every time you do that. Um, but we'll use real colors. I still don't like this because I don't like the lack of consistency when the line is different from what I can see as the color. And so let's go back to what this was, which was clear one. Instead, I want to change the outline. Here, the outline is foreground, but I would like this blue color we're calling layer one. And now things look really consistent. However, there's other things I like to do sometimes, which is maybe we can have there be an outline of this point that runs into the blue and is white in the middle. This marker fill lets me control that. I could say hide the marker fill. I don't really like this look because I can see where the line comes through and changes in the middle. You might like that. What I tend to do when I want to do this is I set this to white and then it covers up the line underneath. And I really like the way scatter plots look this way. Also to my eyes, I don't like that everything here is thinner than the axes. And so if it were me, I would also go back and say the width of this line should be one point. So that it's a little bit thicker, same as what the axes have. And then this line also that connects them should be one point. And now I have a consistent, nice thick line that makes this a scatter plot. That's one way to make a scatter plot. If we wanted to, we can really easily get rid of the line simply by hiding it. Now we have something that looks like a type of scatter plot. If you didn't want to draw attention to the connectedness between points, in this case, I think the line does help, so I'd leave it, but that's how you get a scatter plot that does not have lines. You simply hide the line. We could have also chosen to connect these not with the straight lines, but with the curved lines you sometimes see. That's this Bezier join. And I actually don't like this at all because it's trying to tell you that it thinks it's smoothly changing and we have no evidence for that. So I just leave it straight. Other things we can do with the line. This median home price is actually just at the beginning of each year. And so the way that the data was made is that there's a particular price and then it changes here to this price when we next measure it. In between, we don't know that these two lines are uh, smoothly varying as shown here. And that's also what I was saying I don't like about the smooth join. So I can use steps to indicate that if I wanted. I could say a left step. And now what happens is the data moves over and then jumps every time we make a measurement. If you don't like that, you could do it right, where now it jumps up and goes over, or it could be centered where basically it's taking jumps and then going through the points that we notice. And so there are times where you'd like to have this sort of square looking connectiveness 
and it's okay. You know, you can you can use this less shift points to move where the actual points are. I think for us having steps off and having the direct connection between them actually looks the best, but there are times where the step is very nice to have. Like everything else, all of these values, we can control things like what the style is. We could have this be a dotted line if we wanted. We could have many different styles of dots. I think solid is good. We have make it transparent if we wanted to see slightly behind it. I think having no transparency is also quite nice. There's many other options here, some of which we don't have the ability to use yet, such as adding in and controlling what the error bar is. But the next one is important to us in just a moment, because what if we were trying to not show the points? We want a line chart instead. And a line chart typically would not have these data markers. The easiest way to handle that, well, actually there's two. One would be to go in and just hide the outline this looks like it's broken because we didn't hide the fill. And if I hide both of those, then I get a line chart. I could also choose not to hide these, but go back to our main plot here and under marker, say none. And that gets rid of them automatically without needing to hide both of them. So that might be a cleaner way to do this. Here you'll see there's more options, some of which we haven't seen yet, many having something to do with errors. And so we'll consider the rest of these when we get to working with errors. I have a line plot, that's nice. Another thing we sometimes do is have area plots. And in an area plot, we fill underneath a line. That is this option here. After error bar, we have fill one. It says fill one because there's two options. I have fill one and fill two. Fill one, you can see, has a shaded region underneath a line. And that's what it's doing, is that if I uncheck, and by default, this is hidden. If I uncheck hide, I get a fill underneath that line. The way I think about it is that it basically goes to the minimum value of the axis. I think that helps, especially if you're changing around what the axis is doing. I can do things like change the color, like this, like this gray is a bit much. Maybe I want light gray. That starts to look a little bit better. Maybe I even want the same Lear 1 so that it looks solid. I could have a Lear 1 that's very transparent so that I get a lighter shade and I can see what's going on underneath it. And I think that's a reasonable looking plot here. If I wanted to highlight something up here, Maybe I could say, I also want to see the fill above. And then here, maybe I want this to be layer two, which is this purple and that transparency also to be 66. One thing that happens here, of course, is that I have a small gap because we had opened up the min and max a little bit because it was cutting off our markers. We don't have markers anymore. And so here I could just go back to auto and it'll completely fill up everything. And now we have this nice plot. Of course, if we wanted to do this multiple times, we would just make new plots and they would stack on top of each other the same way we've seen for anything in views. And with that, we're done looking at how to make basic scatter plots, line charts, and area charts in views. Overall, it's pretty straightforward. We can create these basic plots that show correlation.